And joining me here at the Capitol is Wisconsin Democratic Congressman Mark Pocan, a member of the Progressive Caucus, the growing Progressive Caucus as things have, have <laughs> progressed. Uh, it seems to me every time Manchin or Cinema say something or do nothing in Cinema's case, say nothing in Cinema's yeah. case, uh, you're, you get more votes. Uh, what is your reaction to the bottom lines that we've now finally heard from Joe Manchin? Can well, you live with it? It's great to be here with you. I I'm glad we finally got some bottom lines from one half of Manchinima, right? We, we need to get all the information so we can start the final negotiations. I'm very optimistic. There are hundreds of Democrats in the House and 48 Democrats in the Senate all rowing together. We've got a couple in the Senate and a couple handfuls here in the House that are still picking what kind of wood they want their ore to be made out of. But we're going to get this done. And Nancy Pelosi is exactly right. I would never bet against Nancy Pelosi. I don't think we're going to have the vote today, but we're going to get this done, whether it be next week or the following week or the following week. When does it matter? What's in the bill is what matters. So Congresswoman Jayapal, who is your leader of the Progressive Caucus, who has been taking a very hard line, if she sees what Manchin is willing to go for, and you all know that the Biden presidency is really on the line here, if this fails, he becomes a, a, a lame duck going into midterms almost, you know, it's, it's a really tough vote to fit to lose as Pelosi as well. So you believe that the caucus which is now 60 some strong, 90 strong, but you've got 60 votes willing to stick it out with like, at least that, right? You're willing to go for a scaled back reconciliation bill and not today, not tomorrow, but sometime in a week or two. I really believe the president's agenda includes both bills very clearly. He had a $6 trillion proposal that's been brought down to three and a half trillion through compromise. Apparently, there'll be a little more compromise. But if you just have the infrastructure bill, $550 billion additional dollars, that's 9% of what President Biden wants. So I think we have the president's back in getting his full agenda done. And I do think that the real issue, and I disagree with Senator Manchin on this, is I wouldn't want to go back to Arizona or West Virginia and explain how you killed child care, affordable child care for your constituents, the child tax credit that 40 million American families are going to benefit from. I mean, that's the important stuff that's in this Build Back Better Act. So we're going to get both bills done. It, it may not be pretty. It may be the storm before the calm. But I'm still very confident, as is Speaker Pelosi, we're going to get this done. But he seems to be focused not on the child care, but focused on the coal and not wanting to take those climate provisions back to West Virginia and wanting some kind of sign off on legislation going through his committee. Well, and I think Senator Sinema might have some other bottom lines, but at some point we need everyone to put their bottom lines uh, down in front of us so we could have the final negotiations and uh, we'll figure it out. But these are big ideas that real people in our districts are going to benefit from. Affordable child care, that child tax break 40 million American families benefit from, lowered costs on prescription drugs. I mean, finally, insulin, 100 years ago, they sold the patent for a dollar each to the three people so to be in there the public good and we pay hundreds of dollars uh, for, for insulin on a regular basis. We're going to get all of that done in the Build Back Better Act, and uh, I'm confident it doesn't matter when it gets done as far as today uh, or next week or the following week. What really matters is we get the agenda done for the president because it's the, really the agenda for the American people. And, Congressman, what do you think about Senator Cinema? I mean, I know there's always House-Senate rivalry, but even among her colleagues, getting to uh, you know, a place where someone asked her at a stakeout last night, you know, where are you right now, meaning on the legislation, and she said facetiously, I'm standing in front of the elevator. I'm paraphrasing, but it was flip, it was not substantive, and there's a lot of criticism of a freshman senator behaving like this on something this important. Yeah, I think, you know, being coy and maybe bad humor is, is time for that to end. Uh, what we need to do is just like Senator Manchin did, and I give him credit, is he's telling us what he stands for. And that's what the president asked for last week. It may have taken him a week to do that, but he's doing that. We need Senator Cinema to do the exact same thing. And then I think we can really have the progress we need to finalize this bill. And so your, your bet would be and you, you understand this better, uh, and certainly from within the Progressive Caucus, your bet is that Nancy Pelosi is not going to call for a vote today because she wouldn't win it today. Nancy Pelosi doesn't put things on the floor to go down, and uh, she really wants to get this bill done. Um, and I think she realizes that now we finally have at least one of the two senators uh, giving us a number and starting to have the talks that we wish they would have did for a while ago. Um, it wouldn't make any sense to have the vote today, so I'm quite sure it'll be at some point 
weeks down the road. Um, but that's a good thing because we finally have some progress because of those dates set out there. So I give credit to the people who, you know, thought that we were going to have a vote on Monday or today. That helped the conversation. And at the end of the day, we're, we're much closer to having a bill because of it. You go home, though, because there is a, a brief recess. So is it going to is she going to lose support or are you going to lose support as you go home and maybe face some angry constituents? Yeah, I would definitely not want to go back to Arizona and explain how you're holding up child care, tax cuts, lower cost of prescription drugs, family and medical leave, expanded health care options like I. I wouldn't want to do that if I was going to my home state. I'm going to be able to go back and say I support all those things. Um, but I, I wouldn't want to be the person saying you don't. Congressman Mark Pocan from Wisconsin, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh